Hello everyone. Welcome to the course on uh, computer aided drug design. Today we will talk about uh, 3D QSAR. We talked about uh, the normal QSAR. Today we will talk about 3D QSAR which means uh, the confirmations, the molecule stake becomes very important and then we try to superimpose those confirmations and then try to get uh, some um, activity related uh, structural features. Okay, so here confirmations become very important uh, molecule that occupies uh, because uh, as you know when the molecule goes and binds into an active site of an enzyme the confirmation plays a very important role okay so before that uh, if you remember in the past few lectures we talked about QSR and uh, other app so we used a lot of uh, these databases then we used Dragon, Swiss ADME, Kim, Des, Okim to get uh, uh, the various um, descriptors Okay, then uh, I also talked about the build QSAR, which almost looks like an Excel, um, and then I showed how to build that. Then, if you are interested in uh, uh, the semi empirical quantum mechanic descriptors like uh, uh, electron energy or proton and um, highest occupied molecular orbital energy or lowest unoccupied molecular orbital energy, and so on, you have to use MOPAC. Uh, JMOL is for visualization okay so we looked at all these um, now um, there are more softwares on QSAR using this link for example um, I'll just show you we will not uh, have time to spend on uh, so many um, okay so um, Okay, so a lot of uh, software as you can see um, on QSAR, you can uh, start exploring as you can see in this, okay, a lot of software is there, QSAR and uh, some of them are uh, downloadable and some of them are uh, um, based through the web server. So we will not, as I said, have time, so please uh, start exploring. Um, okay, so what is this 3D QSAR? the quantitative relationship between the biological activity of set of compounds and their three dimensional properties okay so ultimately like i said the, the molecule occupies a certain confirmation which is very important for the activity so not all confirmations may be useful for the activity because as you know it finally goes and binds to an enzyme uh, so the confirmation plays a very important role okay so there are different approaches uh, one is called the molecular shape analysis approach um, so what we do here is um, <clears throat> you look at the common overlap steric volume and potential energy because it's a molecular shape between pairs of superimposed molecules they are correlated to the activity so it uses common volumes provide some insight regarding the receptor binding say, site shape and size because it's more of to do with the volume that's the molecular shape analysis. Second is called the molecular topological differences. Okay, this is the another approach. Uh, so what it looks at the minimal steric topological difference approach. Minimal topological difference use a hypermolecule concept for molecular alignment. Then it correlates vertices in the hypermolecule to activity. Okay, that's good. It's molecular topology difference. The third approach is called the comparative molecular movement approach. So basically it looks at the movement descriptors of the molecular uh, uh, mass and charge up to an inclusive of second order. This is called the comparative molecular movement approach. Uh, the fourth approach uh, is called the self-organizing molecular field analysis. So far, so it divides the molecule into actives, inactives, then a grid probe process that penetrates the overlying molecule so you overlay all the molecules and then uh, you look um, then you have a probe molecule and then the resulting steric and electrostatic potentials are mapped on the grid points and are they are correlated with the activity using a linear regression okay that's the fourth approach the fifth approach is called um, it's also a grid based technique um, okay this is called the comparative molecular field analysis COMFA this is very very common if you look at 3D QSR uh, most of the software uh, commercial softwares use this so this is also a grid based technique 
Um, this was introduced in 1988 on the assumption that the drug receptor interactions are non-covalent. As you know, uh, the drug goes and binds to an active site. It doesn't form a covalent bond, but mostly non-bonded interactions like electrostatic, van der Waals, hydrogen bond and so on. So the changes in biological activities or binding affinities of sample compound correlate with the changes in the steric and electrostatic fields. Maybe. Steric and electrostatic fields. So these field values are correlated with the biological activity using partial least square analysis. This, this is a uh, statistical tool a statistical approach so we will not go into that but um, what we do what the approach is they have a probe um, they first will superimpose all the molecules and then they have a probe and then it looks at uh, the probe moves at different uh, locations on the grid and then it may determines the steric and electrostatic uh, fields interaction and then um, that is then correlated with the activity using a partial least square technique so uh, this is the reference which I would like to acknowledge um, for all these uh, five techniques which they describe more in detail. You can uh, have a look at it if you, want, if you are interested to understand uh, more of that. Um, so the commercial software is also use uh, tripods, MSI, they all use uh, these type of uh, uh, COMFA analysis, volume surface, they all use for 3D QSIR. Uh, okay, so so the molecular field may be represented by a 3D grid okay so you divide uh, you create like a, a big rectangular box and then uh, divide into small small grids each voxel represents attractive and repulsive forces between the probe molecule and the target molecule so if you have the target molecule placed and you have a probe molecule placed at each of this grid you look at the attractive and repulsive forces based on steric interaction electrostatic interaction okay so you calculate that so it can be a water octanol it can be even carbon simple oxygen hydrogen H not hydrogen H um, so, so each grid voxel corresponds to two variables in QSR steric and electrostatic then the partial least square technique is applied to compute the coefficients okay once uh, um, you place a probe uh, and then uh, measure the steric and electrostatic interaction between the molecule and that probe. Um, okay, you measure that, and then uh, you try to correlate with the activity. Okay, uh, these properties are known as fields. Steric field, uh, it's an indication of the size and shape of the molecule. Electrostatic, electrostatic field, electron-rich, poor regions of the molecule. Okay. Um, then hydrophobic, hydrophobic properties are relatively unimportant. It doesn't uh, bring in hydrophobic property. The COMFA 3D looks at only steric and electrostatic. So it doesn't bring in the hydrophobic uh, interaction at all. Uh, a grid with energy fields is calculated by placing a probe atom at each volume. Then uh, you calculate the steric using Leonard Jones potential. You calculate the electrostatic Coulombic interactions. Okay. So the probe could be sp3 carbon atom, charge plus one, that's the probe. Okay, so um, what are the advantages of this? No reliance on experimental values, you don't need uh, much of experimental uh, accuracies. Can be applied to molecules with unusual substituents. Okay, it may be very difficult to do with 2D QSAR. Uh, it, it's not restricted to molecules of the same structural class because uh, when we talk about uh, in the normal QSAR, it's always good to use the uh, uh, same class. So your QSAR, if you are developing for uh, uh, ethers, if you extend it to aldehydes, sometimes it might not work. Okay, uh, It's got predictive capability also. So what are the problems? Uh, the molecules must be optimally aligned. That's very important because you place one on top of another. If they are very, very different. Uh, placing them uh, may not be really practical. The molecules, flexibility of the molecules because the molecules can take different conformations. If you have many rotatable bonds, that's a problem. Okay, uh, let's look at uh, what it is. So imagine um, you have a um, simple molecule like this. Okay, uh, it's got. Uh, okay, this is the. Then uh, this could be the conformation of the molecule. You identify the pharmacopores of this molecule. Okay, 
uh, pharmacophores could be say hydrogen uh, bond acceptor because these are all oxygens or it could be a, a hydrophobic okay, centroid these are these could be the pharmacophore so what do we do build each molecule identify the active conformation for each molecule identify the pharmacophore so if you superimpose all of them then it's easy so this these uh, knowledge was taken from this reference you guys can have more look at this to get uh, so i like to acknowledge that um then you place the pharmacopore into a lattice of grid points so we may have a rectangular box and you divide it into lots of grids so you place it so this could be a rectangular box and then you divide it into small small grids and then you place your molecule inside okay so these are the grid points each grid point defines a point in space okay place the pharmacophore into the lattice of this grid point okay position molecule to match the pharmacophore okay like this you have matched so that uh, you now these pharmacophores are matched exactly on uh, some grid points each grid point def now defines a point in space uh, now you can have a probe atom like um, I mon mentioned it could be sp3 carbon so what we do is we move this sp3 carbon at each of these grid points and measure the steric interaction uh, with this molecule or repulsion electrostatic interaction or repulsion calculate so we'll get lots of data and uh, at each of this grid point so suppose you have thousand grid points you will get thousand steric um, interaction data um, and then uh, thousand electrostatic uh, interaction data okay so you will have and then you try to uh, correlate that with uh, the activity using partial least square method okay so probe atom like i said it could be sp3 carbocation it could be even h or it could be o and so on actually so you place each of these molecule at the grid point okay once we do that then so obviously when closer the probe atom to the molecule higher is the steric uh, energy um, so it defines the shape of the molecule by identifying grid points of equal steric energy so you can get a contour line on this okay um, you can have favorable electrostatic interactions that means with positively charged probe indicate molecular regions which are negative in nature uh, or uh, unfavorable electrostatic interaction that means positively charged probe indicate molecules which are positive in nature okay so it could be favorable or unfavorable um, then we can have electrostatic fields by identifying grid points of equal energy that, those are all called a contour line so we keep uh, repeating the procedure for each molecule so you place each molecule and then um, you repeat the same procedure so for each molecule uh, you'll get lots of uh, data with respect to each grid point related to the um, electrostatic interaction or repulsion uh, steric interaction or repulsion then compare the fields of each molecule with their biological activity so obviously uh, we can do a QSIR which is called the 3D QSIR so you identify steric and electrostatic fields which are favorable or unfavorable for activity so um, so compound 1, 2, 5, 3, 4, 5 so this is the biological activity so this could be the grid points okay uh, so at each of the grid points you have the probe and then you get the st steric uh, interaction and um, then at, when you place it here uh, you get some number when you place it here you will get some number you place it here you get some number and so on but let's just pick the steric again with the electrostatic uh, when you place it here same zero zero one you get some number and so on so then you take the second molecule then you take the third molecule then you take the fourth molecule then you take the fifth molecule so when you keep doing that um, you get uh, lots of data with respect to molecular weight and you want to correlate with the activity and you'll get lots of uh, uh, each one sort of could be a descriptor uh, of course uh, like normal QSAR we cannot just take one uh, and then try to get a regression relation but we make use of all of them um, that is how partial least square technique works you take all of them and create um, some composite descriptors and then try to correlate with the biological activity okay that's how it does okay 
so you use a partial so qsar equation will be activity uh, like this like this like this like this like this okay so uh, i will not go into the statistical technique called a partial least squares analysis so you people have to look into uh, some standard book um, so let's uh, also look at uh, a software this is a freely available software it's called uh, 3dqsar.com so all you need to do is uh, you need to uh, get a username password so with that username password it, um, you can log in uh, into that okay uh, you can log into that okay so this is uh, the qsar yeah, this is uh, the internal menu so uh, you need to get in uh, username password so um, you write to them they'll give you access um, so I had already loaded some molecules uh, these are anti-inflammatory okay so I loaded four molecules I've loaded um, uh, their activities also these are um, selective cox2 inhibitors as you can see okay this is bextra this is uh, dup uh, this is uh, rofecoxib and uh, this is called a uh, silicoxib okay so four molecules i have loaded and uh, i have also um, loaded their uh, okay uh, activity values also here as you can see here okay these are the activity values um, as you know DUP has the highest activity so these four molecules are selective COX-2 inhibitors you can load it through SDF file um, I can load more molecules add another molecule or I even draw molecules okay so these are all anti-inflammatory drugs um, Okay, so I have this uh, I can go to the models uh, I can say build new model for selected data set um, so the probe atom could be C3 that's the carbon sp3 carbon uh, like I said you can be a O3 or H or C2 or uh, N3 okay mm, so I can say O for example uh, probe charge I could change it to minus one also now uh, both steric and electrostatic okay um b3 dqs or no running so i had done before a couple of them okay now i am um, this is oxygen i have a c3 here so we can have a look at this uh, if you want um, um it gives you the q square it gives q square it's not very good okay doesn't matter view selected model results okay so it gives you some idea about the model results um as you can see this is the r square q square for this uh, this is r square is good q square is not good um for this model um so we can do view experimental recalculated so it gives you experimental value fitting and then uh, it gives you the cross validated r square okay here uh, and so on uh, we can also look at alignment uh, if you look at the alignment of these molecules okay um, go to alignment view align molecule go to confirmations okay um, view selected confirmations So these are the four uh, uh, molecules celebrex bextra duup r4 and um, so as you can see um this is the celebrex various confirmations aligned 
uh, yeah this is Cerebrex various confirmations aligned uh, this is Cerebrex alone single molecule which I had given okay Celebrex is a single molecule which I had given here okay this is Celebrex uh, as you know this sulfur double bond O double bond O uh, this is various confirmations of Celebrex um, superimposed on each other as you can see here uh, this is uh, Roficoxib <coughs> this is Roficoxib again this got a sulfur and uh, double bond O double bond O here these are the various confirmations of uh, Roficoxib aligned so, as you can see so from this we can get the pharmacophore importance okay this is uh, the other molecule dupe um, okay this also has got a uh, sulfur O2 O2 and these various uh, confirmations of dupe as you can see here So um, this one has been completed just now. Yeah, oh, this one has been completed just now. Completed missing. You selected model results. Okay, so this is the uh, different partial least square methods are being used. So you can see this or square is pretty good. R square, Q square is not good. Uh, and then these are different statistics um, okay these are different statistics which has been used okay so as you can see here um, how the for each one of these models how the R square varies okay. so this is the fitting here okay this is recalculated predicted uh, activity was this fitting here this is cross validated results as you can see here this is for Bextra this is for Roficoxib uh, this is for uh, Bextra and this is for Dupe and this is for Roficoxib okay mm -hmm. so this is steric so we can look at steric and electrostatic here um, Okay, so uh, this gives you steric and electrostatic. Uh, so this is the fitting. This is the cross-validated. This is a fitting. Okay, recal. This is a predicted. Was this uh, okay? As you can see here, this fit is good for Dextra. Uh, fit is not good for Rofic oxide. Fit is reasonably good for uh, uh, the uh, dupe. Okay. So, as you can see, uh, go to modules. Okay, as you can see, um, I have done uh, anti-inflammatory, mostly COX-2 inhibitors like a Bextra, Rofecoxib, um, DUP6. Okay, and then I used to probe um, C3. That is a sp3 carbon oxygen three. Then I also used um, hydrogen not hydrogen H okay. we got uh, different uh, values okay for for both electrostatic and steric um, so you can play around with that okay so I can add uh, more molecules I here in this example I just taken four so we can add uh, more than four we can also have training set and test set also as you can see here um training set test set we can do okay mm. so we can use draw molecules using bimole edit or we can add more multiple molecules add single molecule we can add okay um we can give the activity and then we can give title for that choose file um so we can choose the file 
from where we wanted so so it's quite user friendly okay you can see done then it can be a training set molecule or it can be a uh, test set molecule and uh, so so it's quite uh, simple uh, i suggest that you keep uh, playing around with this uh, particular software um, because it's free and uh, you just have to get a username password um, and once you go to that you can start playing with this so the 3d qsr uh, principle is um, it uh, super impose um, the molecules um, so each uh, first you look at the molecules you get different confirmations find out uh, the um, pharmacopore and then uh, you place the molecule in a grid box so that the pharmacopores are properly kept and then you take a probe um, okay you take a probe molecule like atom sp3 carbon or it could be o or it could be h and then you place it at each uh, grid point and calculate the steric uh, and the electrostatic uh, information uh, so how do you calculate the steric and electrostatic information uh, use a steric uh, Okay, if steric uh, you use the Lenard Jones interaction, electrostatic you look at the Coulombic uh, interaction, right? Um, and then uh, you place it at each grid point. When you do that, uh, you get some numbers. Uh, once you get these numbers, uh, what do you do? You um, make a table, as um, I had mentioned, yeah, make a table. Uh, so at each grid point, um, you for a steric. Uh, Leonard Jones, you will get some number and then the electrostatic, uh, okay, some uh, electrostatic numbers, Coulombic. Then you keep the second molecule, aligned it properly, and then you do the same thing here. Then third molecule, fourth molecule, fifth molecule. You also have the activity here, okay. So you use then you have actually you have too many descriptors right you you, have, you want to make use of all the descriptors unlike in your normal qsr way we used to develop a model uh, a linear regression with one descriptor here we want to you make use of all the descriptors and that is why we use something called partial least square method okay so it creates some composite uh, uh, knowledge based on all the descriptors basically these are all descriptors like okay and then try to develop an equation for biological activity okay so that is how uh, it does the uh, de generates the qsir and once you generate the qsir we can calculate r square we can calculate q square so many things so we can also have a um, just like normal qsir we can also have a, a training set like i showed you in my example of software uh, then you can have a test set and then you can try to predict the activity of those test set compounds uh, with the model which has been 3d qsir model which has been generated using the pls technique okay so um, um, 3d qsir is very powerful because ultimately molecules um, take a confirmation um, and they go and bind to the active site of the enzyme so that's a very very important uh, parameter uh, so some of the uh, information which um, I have shown in the slides taken from this reference as well as uh, from um, okay from this reference okay so uh, I like to acknowledge both so there are many softwares for QSAR which I just uh, briefly showed and I also showed you some examples of uh, softwares which can be run for both uh, uh, 2d qsir as well as for 3d qsir so um, i expect uh, that you can start exploring these okay we will continue on a new topic in the next class thank you very much for your time